And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the OSBA Championships. Game two of the, the first round. Of course, Father Henry Carr versus Thornley. Both teams, identical records in the standings, 13 and six. I'm joined by my partner, Daniele Franceschi, Anthony Gaio on hand, and Daniele, both these teams play similar. What's the key to really uh, pull out the victory tonight? Yeah, as you mentioned, both teams with very similar styles. They like to get up and down. They like to play with tempo and be in transition. I do find it interesting. Thornley 2-0 this season against Henry Carr, and the Crusaders have had a terrific season after a year ago just going 3-14, and winning 13 games. It's been a marvelous season for Coach Paul Melnick and his team. I do think if Thor Thornley certainly has the edge in terms of the – sheer talent on the floor but when you look at Henry Carr if they're able to kind of adjust to the pace and the tempo that Thornley wants to play at maybe slow things down I think they'll give themselves a great opportunity to compete and win this basketball game it's a great 4-5 matchup uh, the winner of course advances to the semifinal so this is a big contest both teams are gonna be fired up there's gonna be a lot of energy and emotion in the building and no doubt about it. And of course, the All Canadian list got announced the other day. And going back for the second time in a row is Cassius McNeely. Mm -hmm. For Father Henry, what's the key to stopping this guy? Well, and it's not just Cassius McNeely, but it's also his backcourt mate in Keyshawn right, Bartholomew. Right. And we've talked extensively, and we've had the good fortune of you and I of watching them multiple times this season, and they've both been absolutely electric in the uh, instances where we've seen them up close. So I think for Henry Carr, you're looking at leaning on your veteran guys. Jalen Menzies has been one of the best defenders, perimeter defenders in the OSBA this season. You're looking at a Josh Morgan. You, they got a lot of balance, and I really and one guy who hasn't been talked about a lot, I think, is Kobe Lamb. But to me, he's a, he's a he's a very important part here because he's a veteran guy, has played at the elite of the elite levels, played for Athlete Institute last year, transfers here for his senior year. This is a big moment, a big game for him. I think Henry Carr has enough depth in the backcourt to compete against this this really, really strong backcourt tandem. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you see immediately off the bat here the, the height advantage for the backcourt mm -hmm. of Thorne Lee. But like you said, Jalen Menzies, second in the OSBAs this year and steals a two and a half. And tip off is on now. Thorne Lee with the ball. Over to Sarandon. McNeely looking to get involved early. Drives to the rim. Good defense that time by Henry Carr. And both McNeely and Bartholomew were down in Charlotte a few weeks back participating in the Basketball Without Borders camp. Two of the top performers and representing Canada. One of, they were two of seven representatives for Canada on both the men's and women's side combined. So a high honor for them. Surrender now getting set to throw it in. Nearly a five-second violation there and a steal. Telford. Bartholomew. Nice find to McNeely in the corner. McNeely unable to open up the scoring here. An offensive board. Second chance opportunities. Ooh. Telford, good offensive rebound. Nice job recovering there defensively, though, Henry Carr. And Henry Carr, best known for their havoc defense. They like to be very aggressive on the defensive end of the floor, which then spurts their offense. It's right. when they get in the half court, how are they going to execute? That's a big question. Oh, double team now. Holds it off. Here's Morgan. Here's Kobe Lamb. You're talking about him earlier in the broadcast. Shot at the end of the clock. Great defense that time by Thorne Lee to shut him down. And back comes McNeely down the court. Finds Richards. Off ball screen coming here for Telford. Nice find to Richards. McNeely. Sarandon for an open three from the corner. He makes no mistake about it. They open up the scoring here with a quick three. He's able to stretch the floor as a big, and we've seen him do it all year long. Not only is he going to rebound and block shots and be a great interior presence, but if you let him step back behind that three-point line, he can stretch the floor and make you pay. Caleb Johnson said to check it, to throw it in here. Lamb, one-on-one -on -one with McNeely. Lamb uses his strength there, can't get it to go. Johnson blocked that time, and McNeely comes away with it. Looking to push the ball here, Sarandon. Telfer going in strong, and he throws it down, and the foul. Telfer gonna head to the line and a chance for an extra point. Uh, Jamil Telfer, this is one of those guys, when he's locked in, he can be absolutely dominant at times. We've seen it throughout the season. You see it on display right there, terrific athleticism. Takes it strong to the rim, hoop and the harm, emphatic jam. 
He's so athletic that I think an underrated part of his game is how strong he is. Absolutely. Really. You saw it right there on display. Comes Morgan now back the other way. One on one with Telford. Lamb looking to call out a play here. Morgan taking a quick three, and he knocks it down. Good answer that time. Joshua Morgan for three. If Neely, a lot of contact there. You're waiting for the whistle to be called. And, and if if anything, I will say, if you're if you're Paul Melnick, I don't believe you have to be upset with that foul because you be physical with Cassius McNeely as much as possible. Try to get under their skin, make it difficult for them to get up and down the floor, get into their offense. No doubt about it, because once McNeely gets going, it's it's hard to stop that guy. Sarandon finds an open McNeely. Good kick. And he drains it from the corner. That's just too easy. Great vision, great job Sarandon, able to suck in that secondary defender and make the extra pass. Good look in the corner, McNeely knocking it down. High ball screen coming here. They switch it on Sarandon. Good play by McNeely to get back into it. Caleb Johnson using his power, oh. and he floats it, and beautifully done that time in the lane. Showing some muscle there, bullying his way to the basket. This is a veteran Henry Carr team. These guys, most of them either seniors, some in their fifth year of, and final year of eligibility. And so they're playing for a lot here tonight. Back comes Henry Carr. They got numbers. Good, Good crossover. Play by Lamb. Euro stepping in the lane and banks it in. Kobe down. Lamb, he was a key contributor at St. Mike's. They won an offset championship. He goes over to Athlete Institute and then comes over to Henry Carr to finish out his high school career. And he's become a key contributor for this team. Josh Morgan to inbound here. Tough shot that time down the other way by Telford. There's one guy on the floor right now that I need to have an impact from. If you're Henry Carr, you need this. You need Marcus Harding, 21 in blue, 6'9", your big guy. He's got to make an impact, and there's a nice feed inside. Oh, he rejected by the rim that time was Jalen Menzies. Take the deuce. You don't see that often. It's a good back cut, though. Good recognition. Bartholomew cut off by Harding. Looked like he had a mismatch there. Surprised he didn't take it. Sarandon open for the three. Off the mark that time, and back comes Lamb and Henry Carr. Can't afford to give up those looks. They'll make you pay, Thornley, if you keep giving them those. Oh, beautifully done that time on the hop step, and he lays it in. Good inside hand finish at the rim. Nice job taking it to the rim. Bartholomew now one-on-one -on -one with Menzies. Got to be careful against Menzies every time. And that time Richards lays it in. Good job using his muscle down there. Back and forth through the first four minutes of this game. Well, Dyler Richards, he was inserted into the starting lineup, Thorn Lee. It was Thal Beal, and you're going to see him come on the floor in just a few moments' time for Thorn Lee, but he was taken over for Thal Beal in that starting unit. Richards now. Sarandon. Looking to run the big, big pick and roll. Yep. That a little bit of holding a, there. That could be a very deadly play. Two big, guys like, two big guys like that in the pick and roll. Scary. And again, I have to reiterate because you look at Marcus Hardy, he's got two fouls already early on in this ball game, but he's an, he's an important piece because he gives you that length. He's, he's going to be that interior presence, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Contest shots, protect the rim. And if you're not doing that, then you're not making the impact. You're going to see him check out with the two early here. Yeah, that could definitely be a big loss for Henry Carr. Expect Thornley to take nice advantage of it. And right on cue, Routich. Victor Routich off the bench. Lamb looking to take it in strong. Good hey, strong gets take. Gets the foul there. Maybe not a smart play if there was no foul, but you know he'll take it for sure. So for Henry Carr in the postseason this year, obviously here this afternoon in the quarterfinal, after not making the playoffs a year ago, and again, one of the best seasons for Coach Paul Melnick at the prep level thus far for his program that for so many years was dominant at the high school level and they capped their high school run winning the officer championship in 2016 before turning prep. And Lamb off on the first. Thorin Lee coming into this game. Three game winning streak so they've been hot. Looking to continue it today. Lamb makes the second.
Barthelemy, second team all-star this year in the OSBA. Telford, Routich. Nice find inside. Sarandon tries to use Oh, and there. the tip. Telford there on the putback. Good again, done. Again, you see the athleticism there from Telford getting up and tipping that one home on the second chance opportunity. Morgan. Back to Morgan. One on one. Telford. Doesn't you take the pick. Lamb. In and out. You can see Henry Carr wants to sp space the floor. Nice pass. Look Beautifully inside. done. Alley oop that time. Demangus the finishes it off. So, excuse me, Dyler Richards taking over in that starting unit for Thal Beal out with injury. You see him on the bench for Thorne Lee. Oh, Lamb. Oh, nice finish. One speed tonight. You see at the scorer's table, Cash McNeely getting set to check back in again. And Routich a little too aggressive and called for the travel that time. But like I was saying, Cash McNeely, McNeely don't expect it for him to sit much this game. Well, Charles Hantamakos, he's doing a nice job. You're going to see him stagger the minutes as we see right here. So he's going to make sure that for the... The majority of the game, we're going to see at least one of Cassius McNeely or Keyshawn Bartholomew on the floor at all times for Thorne Lee. Morgan now, one on with Telford. Can't get the handoff. Good shut down defense that time by Thorne Lee. A lot That's of deep. They're getting deep into the shot clock. Every possession when they're in the half court. Good defense that time by Routage. He's streaking. Good nice find. pass. McNeely, great patience that time, and Routage banks it in. Uh, Victor Radicash, he's done a nice job. He did a nice job getting out, and then good patience, waiting out the defender and finishing at the rim. Lamb now one on one with McNeely, calling for a high ball screen. Here comes a switch. One on one with Sarandon, pulls the three off the mark that time, and McNeely grabs that rebound. Sarandon back to McNeely, double team coming. Good find. He's got an open man. Nice job. That's beautiful. That's Great. beautiful basketball. Uh, everybody on the court for Thornley touched the ball that time. And Father Henry Carr needs a timeout. Oh, boy, do they ever need a timeout. Jamil Telford just absolutely slicing and dicing, getting into the heart of that defense, making the extra pass for an easy layup inside. One thing I do want to say, offensively for Henry Carr, they've been very, very stagnant. A lot of high ball screens, not much movement off the ball. We don't see them cutting. The sets, it's, once they get in the half court, you can tell they're uncomfortable. They're relying on a lot of isolation plays. You want to see them space the floor and get more active and some more fluidity on that end. And like you referred to on the previous possession, every time the shot clock is down under five yeah. seconds, Thorne Lee's, you've got to give credit where credit's due, Thorne Lee's playing great on ball and off ball defense today. Well, I also think part of that, now, the last few possessions you saw Henry Carr try to space the floor, go a bit of five out, pass cut, things of that nature. Yes, great job. Thorne Lee is doing a nice job, but I think they're making it easy. When you're dribbling a lot and you're going high ball screen at the top every single time down the floor, you're kind of you're becoming very predictable. So right now you got to change things up and you got to make sure you're going out there and getting some fluidity because there's a lot of standing around, and that's dangerous. In a game that is four quarters long with ten-minute quarters, and you're trying to continuously, we saw Kobe Lamb really trying to push the, the, the issue offensively, be the guy orchestrating. That's going to be tough to sustain over the course of a 40-minute game. Yeah, without a doubt. I'd say for uh, Henry Carr, you look to get it in the post, but obviously uh, Harding mm -hmm. on the bench now, it takes that away, and, and uh, it's just another asset there. But see what Henry Carr can do here. It's a nine-point game. 3.20 left in the first quarter. High ball screen coming. In the lane. Nice pass. Good pass. Even better defense that time by Thornley. They're going in there amongst the tall trees. Victor Radikash. Telford. There's a mismatch. Now he's going to take it. Nice footwork. Great find. Off the mark that time. And back comes Lamb. Spinning beautifully done, and he banks it in. Again, you see that's where they're comfortable. They want to get out. They want to run. They want to create havoc on defense and then execute in transition, get it to the hole. Telford. 
Right of catch. And they're going to call a blocking foul that time. And Paul Melnick is not happy about that at all. Oh, he's one of the more animated coaches in the OSBA. The game we called uh, in Vaughn uh, about mm -hmm. a month ago, Victor Radicach had a huge impact when Cassius McNeely, McNeely was sitting out that game, obviously with basketball uh, without borders. Um, he had a huge impact, and he can do that off the bench, no problem. Oh. He joined the team a little bit late this year, but immediately made a huge impact. Huge impact. I mean, you can't understate the, the influence that he's had because he comes off the bench. There's a guy who's looking, you're, you're talking about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he's got great length. And then we saw him in that game that you're referencing at Vaughn back on the 13th of February where he was able not just to be effective inside, but run the floor, shoot the three, defend well, and, and rebound at a very, very proficient rate. So he's 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 been an, a huge addition for this Thorn Lee team down the stretch. Henry Carr now going baseline and immediately faces three defenders, and it will go back to Thorn Lee. To get back to your point about Victor, imagine if he had 10 more pounds of muscle on him, how no, scary he would be. Yep. He would be winning MVPs in this league. He'd be all Canadian, no problem. He's already great. Just imagine him with 10 more pounds of muscle. Well, he's going to be participating in the BioSteel game. He's one of th three members of this Thunder team to participate that have been selected for the BioSteel All-Canadian game, along with, of course, Cassius McNeely and Keyshawn Bartholomew. And it shows. He's got tremendous potential. Mm -hmm. Look at, this. Look at the movement on D. Great Good footwork. Defense. Yes, indeed. This is, again, stagnant. Scarlet. Stagnant. Look, that's a tough shot right there. And back Great D. Bartholomew now driving up the court. Bartholomew. Good Fights. kick. McNeely open. McNeely off the front of the iron. Rayshon Scarlet, 31 in blue for Henry Carr. Interesting story. I mean, he's coming over from DeVille, spent his most of his high school career there, and now finishing up here with Henry Carr, making the transition to prep. And just a side note about Scarlett there, as, as uh, David's going to head to the line, Scarlett selected for the all-academic team this year mm -hmm. as well, getting it done on and off the floor. And we haven't mentioned, but we do want to send our thoughts and prayers to Savory Phillip, who suffered a, um, a leg injury in our first game of the day, the first quarter final between TRC and Rise. And he was stretchered off, taken to hospital. So we send him our best wishes and our prayers for a full and speedy recovery. Yeah, no doubt I second that. Such a great player, obviously heading to San Diego next mm -hmm. year and hopefully for a speedy recovery. And, and I think he's going to come back even better than he already is. And, that, and that's a scary thought. And Johnson misses the second. 22-15, under 90 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Double you see, yep. here comes, they love the trap, and this is where they excel Lamb in the fast break. It strong, and he's going to earn those shots. I thought that was good transition defense by Richards. He had, a, he had a couple trailers there I thought he could have passed it off to, but Kobe Lamb, you know how aggressive he is. And you see Charles Hantamakos not too pleased with that call there. I thought he did a good job, I agree, getting his hands up and being square to the ball handler. Coming out now is Marcus Harding, and coming in is Malik Kador. So when, Mar when Harding comes off, they just bring back in about the same height. And he makes the first. And he's off on the second here. Johnson trying to use his power there. Not a great shot that time. But it will stay with Henry Carr and Bartholomew having some words with the ref there. Not happy about that. Hey. They yeah, they got it right. The call. Yep. And Rather and than get it right than wrong. 100%. That's a great job by the officials coming together, convening, and making sure they, they made the correct call. Henry Carr looking to play a little bit more aggressive defense here as the quarter winds down. Sarandon, he's got some space. Great find to McNeely. 
I say he stepped out of bounds that time. The, here's, here's the caveat when you play this style, this Havoc style of defense where Henry Carr really loves to trap, especially when it's in the half court. You're going you're gonna to give up driving lanes. And so Thornley's done an excellent job so far. Drawing, kick, drive, kick, drive, kick. Even though McNeely stepped out of bounds there, he had the right mindset. Put it on the floor, get it into the paint, and then kick out. So they, if they continue to do that, I think they'll be effective offensively. Kobe Lamb has some space off the mark there. Although the shot wasn't close that time, I'd like to see more of that from uh, Henry Carr here. Pick and roll and pass it out to the shooter and get some more ball movement going here. Listen, for, from a basketball standpoint, offensively, the, the paint is a sacred area. If you can get into the paint every time you drive the basketball, that is your goal, that is your objective. When you do that, the defense is forced to collapse because of your proximity to the rim, and then you, that opens up lanes to kick out, find the shooters, and get the extra passes. There's a good look. Routich, beautifully done that time. 25 to 16 we here. We, ta we talked about the big lefty being able to stretch out and shoot it, and you saw it on display right there, good stroke. Good close out that time off the back of the iron. And I thought they should have taken the last shot there. And now Thornley has a chance here. Bartholomew, floater. Oh, and he gets to go at the buzzer. Keyshawn Bartholomew with a sigh of a relief almost. Beautifully done that time. Daniele, what are your takeaways from that quarter? Obviously an 11-point lead here, but Henry Carr's shown some signs there. Let's start with the final play there. That sequence, poor clock management by Henry Carr leads to a bucket on the other end to end the quarter. You, ha you, can't, you can't afford to have that happen. Games like this, it, it comes down to discipline. Which team is going to be more disciplined on both ends of the floor? And right now in that opening quarter, Thornley won that quarter. But not only did they win the quarter, they were more disciplined. And if that continues this thing could get out of hand because they played an excellent quarter of basketball. Henry Carr has to make some adjustments. For sure. The Ontario Scholastic Basketball Association would like to thank our amazing team of sponsors and partners for always having our back. Ontario Basketball, Pretty River Sports and Entertainment, Crossover, Entropy, Custom Clothing, Canada Basketball, Iran Awards, and Engraving. And fans, be sure to follow Ontario SBA on Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook for news and highlights. And subscribe to OSBA TV on YouTube for live games, highlights, and interviews. Look at that. You're, on, you're in sync with our uh, announcer in, in the <laughs> building here. The legendary comfy confines of the Madame Athletic Center, formerly Maple Leaf Gardens. And of course, home. Underway here in the second quarter. Neely looking for a screen here. Richards to Bartholomew, spins off. Good find to Sarandon. Neely back out to Bartholomew, beautifully done. And Cassius McNeely was holding up the three before it even went in. That's how much confidence he has in his teammate. <laughs> Wide open look, and what did we talk about during the quarter break? Get where, in the paint. He got in the paint, kicks the corner, wide open. Oh, Victor Raddick and Ash! Beautifully done that time. Great find. It's getting out of hand here, and Caleb Johnson can't hit the mid-range shot. Already 12 for the big fella off the bench. McNeely. High post. Oh, bad turnover that time. And back comes Henry Carr. Oh, beautifully done. Just can't finish everything but Bartholomew. Got numbers. Oh, what an oh athletic my. He had Cassius McNeely in the corner as well, but decided to take it up strong and finish. 34-16. We're not even two minutes into the second quarter yet. He's one of my favorite players to watch in this league. I mean, the, the, the combination of athleticism with the skill and the ball handling ability, this guy is just, he's so fun to watch. Really, the sky's the limit for this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Another uh, turnover at that time for one, Henry Carr. One of Quebec's finest, I'm sure the... People of Montreal will appreciate that. This guy has done it at every single level. He's proven to be one of the best in Canada at his position. And this is why these two in the backcourt, we talked about it extensively. We've had conversations 
both on air and off air about teams that are capable of competing and, and for the championship. Oh, beautifully done. Sorry to cut you off there, but Sarandon with a beautiful spin. This Thorn Lee team has all, most, uh, all the ingredients to be able to make a deep run this weekend. And you know what? You know what gets overlooked from this season? They were the only team to hand Orangeville prep their only Absolutely. loss of the year. Now, there were, of course, the scheduling circumstances surrounding that, but at the end of the day, you can't overlook the fact that they won that basketball game, and still you have to play the game, and they were certainly very, very impressive in that win back in November on their home floor. Just a reminder, following this game, Ridley College will take on Vaughn Prep. Following that, it will be Orangeville versus Central Tech at the later game in the last game of the quarterfinals. And, of course, we're back here for the next two days for semis and finals. Johnson makes the first. Charles Hanamakos, his first year as head coach of the Thornley Thunder, was with Athlete Institute last year. And they had a disappointing playoff a year ago. And he comes over to Thornley. He's done an excellent job with this team in his first season at Thornley Secondary. Nearly another shot, nearly another basket there as he's wide open. Menzies uses the strength but can't get it to go. And McNeely again comes and Two on one. Everybody. Another alley-oop. Oh, great adjustment but can't finish. And here comes Kobe Lamb. You're, very, you're playing a very dangerous game when you're gambling and, and you're being aggressive defensively. And you see they've had three, it seems like three or four two-on-ones. Odd man breaks great in this quarter. Menzies, mid-range shot. Thornley will definitely live with that one. And you know what? Getting back to the backcourt of Barthelemy and McNeely, they can make they can be a make a case for the best backcourt in all of. The oh no SBAs. question! I, I definitely feel like they're they're in that conversation because they offer so much and both are so dynamic. They can not only score the ball, but they're tremendous playmakers. And then defensively, they also hold up against anybody in the in the OSBA. So there's no question in my mind when you look at those two forming one of the most potent duos regardless of position, never mind just backcourt, but regardless of position, two of the, the best players in this league. And they have great size for point guards too. And this is what you, the luxury that you have with, the, with, with both of them. You're able to stagger the minutes. So we have yet to see at any point in this first half where these guys were both sitting at the same time. Right now you have McNeely's going to catch a breather. Then he's going to come back in. You're probably going to have Barthelemy's going to get a breather, a bit of a blow. So it's good strategy on the part of Charles Hantamakos, and it gives them a lot of flexibility. And they're in clear control right now, 36 to 18, seven minutes to go in the half. And Henry Carr is looking for some answers now on both ends of the floor. He makes a second. Barthelemy, Sarandon, nice, feed. nice find. And Richards gets blocked at the rim, but they're going to call a foul. And Kobe Lamb is upset about that one. Felt like he got all ball there, and I think he might have a case. Yeah, again, I just, I mean, how effortless was it for them to get inside there, right? I mean, anytime you get into the heart of the defense, inside the paint, I mean, good things are bound to happen for you offensively. And then for Henry Carr, that's... That's tough territory. You're asking a lot out of your guys. Richardson off on the first free throw in. And it's clear right now that Thornley's playing at their speed. And it's so and they are one of the best transition teams in the league, especially if you're trying to trap them. There's always going to be an open man. They have shooters all over the floor. This is why we said off the top, I, I just felt like that's that was the wrong approach for Henry Carr. You don't want to get into a track meet with these guys. You really don't. You want to be able to command the game and play at a pace that is conducive to the talent, the skill that you have, because these guys can break down their defenders individually. They can yeah. get it to the hole, but you know, I guess it's just a lack of confidence in the half court for this team as to why they want to get up and down as much as they do. Listen, I'm no coach, but I'm going to harp back on as Caleb Johnson gets to the line for two. I'm no, co I'm no, no coach, but I would love to see Marcus Hard or Harding get uh, some, some touches, touches down inside. Low. You know, like if, if you're not going to beat them in transition, yeah. you got to beat them in the half court. Sure. 
Maybe well, very, a double team. Yeah, I, 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 that's a great point. I mean, you throw it down. Look at the look at the size on the floor. I mean, r realistically, he, he's he's got to be capable of. You know, you, you throw it down there a couple of times. You feed him. You get him. You get him engaged. I don't think we've seen him really touch the basketball a lot. So that changes things too. And it's been very perimeter oriented in the half court. They're running around the three point line. You, you got to get straight line drives. You want to get to the basket, right? Yep. And that's when they're effective. And now they find themselves in a 15 point deficit, and and it's way easier said than done to come back on. Well, certainly eight. plenty of game, right? Plenty right. of game left. Right. But at the end of the day, I. Again, I think we're both on the same page, and we agree that uh, a lot, per, you know, they've been very stagnant on this end, and then they've been gambling a lot defensively, it's and that's put them in a bad spot. It's coming way too easy for Thornley on the offensive end here, and McNeely's back in the game here with Bartholomew on the floor again. Nearly stolen that time, but it will stay with the Thunder. Thornley, even without Thal Beal, so I mean, you're talking about another guy who brings tremendous length and athleticism to the table. He's not in the lineup. With, for Thorn Lee, so you know you would think that's a plus, a positive for for Henry Carr. They're really struggling here. Cash is Good luck. Oh, nice no look to Sarandon, unable to finish that time. Nice pass. And he can't save the ball. Josh Morgan just steps out of bounds that time. And every time uh, Thorn Lee misses, you just feel like they're going to get an offensive glass because they've just been dominating it here in the first half. They absolutely have. I mean, they, they've been so active on the glass, and it, it's shown. They've gotten those second-chance points. Now Telfer one-on-one -on -one with Morgan. Again, McNeely involved at the top of the, the three-point line. Step back, Cassius McNeely, nothing but cash. It's one, of the, it's one of the few occasions we've seen them have to settle a little bit. But then when you have a guy like that, I mean, he's able to create separation, get his own shot, and then smoothly knock down that jumper from the elbow. Menzies, boy, they needed that one big time. I think the scouting report is telling him, let him shoot that three. He was open. He's had a few good looks, hasn't been able to hit. It's a tough shot. I thought he had Sarandon open in the corner that time. Bartholomew decided to go with the, the fadeaway, but it will stay with the Thunder regardless. Damani Brown coming into the game for Henry Carr. Timeout, Timeout coming. Thornley going to talk it over here. Been a very uh, dominant game so far for Thornley, to say the least. Yeah, but you know, and it's interesting. As poorly as Henry Carr has played, it, it's only a thirteen-point game, so they're still well within reach and within striking distance. But uh, again, as we've as we've touched on, it's been a lot of Thornley's had it very easy. They've had the opportunity. They've been getting to the rim with ease. They've been getting great looks, sharing the ball, making the extra pass. Uh, Henry Carr has struggled, so they they're. they're they're trying to find something that works. They need a bit of a spark here. And I think it starts with their two stars. Honestly, you got to get Joshua Morgan some easy shots here. And I know I sound like a broken record, but you got to get Marcus Harden going yep. down low, no doubt about it. And and as opposed to from getting him going, he's got to get himself going. He's got to he's got to be more uh, more uh, aggressive on the glass, both ends for sure. He's got the size to do it and the strength. It's inexcusable right now. But like I said, don't want to overreact. Just a 13-point game. Still 5:24 to go in the first half. You also want to focus a little bit of the the, the, the contributions off the bench. And Thornley certainly has had the contributions from their bench unit, and in particular Victor Radicash. So he's come in and he's provided them with a huge lift, and that's a big difference as well. I don't think we've seen one guy really come off for Henry Carr that's made it a, a massive impact. Has had that put the been able to put a stamp on the game that the way they need to. They need somebody to give them that energy. And that right bite. on cue, here comes Menzies with the steal and finish. That's why he's second in all of OSBA's Absolutely. two and a half steals per game. There's no need to gamble. I mean, play play straight up. Play good man-to-man -man defense. And if you're Thorin Lee, you can't take your foot off the pedal now. No. His team at Henry Carr's too good. And there you go. Another steal. Kobe Lamb's got a streaker. There you go. Harding. Oh, he misses a layup. Great transition defense by Cassius McNeely. Neely, oh, you hop stepping in oh, and he man. plays it in. So you, you miss one on a, a gimme on one end, down the other way, fast break, give up a layup. It's tough. 
But again, some positive signs because right. I felt like they did a good job defensively. That's a that's a that's, that's a bad that's shot. A rush shot. No, let's call it what it. Yeah, like you said, it is a bad shot. It's no need for that. Good defense though by Lamb. Oh, nice steal. steal by Menzies again. Already two on the that's day. That's it. And he just gets it to go. Almost rolled out of the rim there with Telford's effort on the way back. So what you saw there are the last few possessions. Uh, Henry Carr picking up there the intensity defensively, but in the man-to-man, -man, they've been very, they've been effective. I like it. I mean, making things difficult. Don't gamble. Keep guys in front, and then play and 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 jump passing lanes. And Menzies has done a terrific job all year. Oh wow, that's McNeely. I thought he got blocked that time, but they're going to call a foul. Cash is going to head to the line for two. A little bit of momentum going to Henry Carr here, but Thornley's so good enough that they regained it right back. 40-29 to 29 right now, 3.54 to go in the first half. Makes the first. 354 for Henry Carr. If you could get it down to single digits, I think that's a that's a huge win. That, that's a, yeah, I was gonna say that's a big win going into the half. You definitely want to gain some momentum heading into the break. Talk it over, make some adjustments at the half. Caleb Johnson gonna take it up the floor now for Henry Carr. Looks like he's going to take him in isolation. Nice kick out. Once again, it goes stagnant. they got to get more ball movement here. And Johnson finds some space. Can't hit that time. And back comes Bartholomew in the thunder. And here they come again. They're yep. going to come to trap. Another trap. And McNeely finds some space again. Fades away. Can't hit. If if you're uh, Father Henry, you can live with There's that another, shot. Another second chance opportunity. Can't live with this shot. Oh, how about Rada oh. Cash? How about the second, third, fourth multiple efforts from the big fella? Kobe Lamb now. One on one with McNeely. 44 29. They need to get a bucket here and fast. Morgan. Hop step in. He's going to head to the line for two. Rada Cash going to pick up that foul. Oh, they're going to call it on the floor yep. that time. I thought it was in the act, but. One other thing that the players have to adjust to is the three-point line here. It's the FIBA three-point line. Of course, this is the home of the Ryerson Rams, both the men's and women's teams, so this is the college three-point line, which is a bit of an adjustment as, as, as opposed to what the OSBA is accustomed to with the home gyms. This time, Lamb is going to head to the line for two here. Now, we're going to get to see the full breakdown statistically. Kobe Lamb in the first quarter was three of eight from the field. He, he was leading the way with eight points, but I'll be curious to see as to what the field goal percentages look like now. At the same token, if you're getting a guy who has to be a leading scorer and he's three of eight from the field, I think defensively you'll take that every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Like it's, right? it's not like Kobe Lamb has, has not been aggressive. He has, but the defense of the Thunder has just been unreal so far here in the first half. And he hits the second. 13 point game now, under three minutes to go. In this opening half of the quarterfinals between the Thunder. A bit of a half court trap. Hanukkah. Another open shot. Oh, Sarandon doesn't take it in. And they force a turnover. They got numbers four on one. Lamb going to take it himself. And he's going to head to the line for two. See, he picked up the foul, but I do not like that take. And I'll tell you why. It was a four on one. Mm -hmm. You should have had a layup. We didn't. You didn't need a, a foul there. You didn't need to go aggressively at the rim like that. You could have laid it off, got a, got an easy deuce, and then get back on the other end. I think in the same breath, however, now Radikash is in foul trouble. He has two fouls. Sure. But once again, he is coming off the bench too. And Lamb hits the first. It does put Henry Carr in a bonus situation for the rest of the quarter as well. So, And he makes both from the line. 
It's like Thorin Lee's time out here. Over, yeah. Good time out. Last thing you want to do is get uh, Father Henry Carr. A little bit of momentum here heading into the se heading into the second half. But, of course, on the other end, you really want that if you're Henry Carr. You don't want any uh, stoppages in play right now. But 44, 33, 233, two go. This would be huge for Henry Carr to go on a nice little run here to cut it into single digits. When Henry Carr can force turnovers and play at their pace, which is in the open court, they, they can be a very dangerous team. It's when a team like Thorn Lee, as we've seen for most of the half, has been able to systematically just pick apart that half-court trapping system, that aggressive havoc defense, that's when they get into a lot of trouble. I think the Thunder in the last three, four minutes of this quarter here have kind of gotten away with to what was working. And we've seen them try to force some shots as to whereas in the first quarter it was move the ball, high post, extra pass, open three, drive, kick. We saw a lot of ball movement. I think they got a little bit stagnant. So right now I'm just kind of reminding my players if I'm Charles Haddam Ackles, hey, let's let's stay patient. Let's continue to be disciplined. We've done an excellent job to get build this 11-point advantage. Let's not throw that away. Let's continue to be patient. Let's continue to share the basketball. We're going to get the looks we want. And it's Henry Carr. They've been able to pick up two, three, four turnovers, force a few turnovers down the stretch here. That's allowed them to kind of chip away. Here comes Bartholomew now for the Thunder up the floor. One of Jalen Menzies. you got to be thinking in the back of your head every time you're going against Menzies. He's such a ball hawk. And there, there's a lane right there. Oh, nice shot. Oh, great athleticism shown there by Bartholomew to lay it in off the alley -oop. Lamb. Morgan. Good contest. Got to get a shot here. And here's Lamb. Open three. In and out. Shots just are not falling right yep. now for Father Henry Carr. They're getting some looks. I was going to say, both were pretty decent looks. Bartholomew, wild shot that time. Here we go. Numbers again. Here we, yep. Transition. Ooh, oh, and a hard foul. Oh boy, that was, that could have been very scary. And it's an un, the official calling an unsporting foul there. A little bit of uh, shoving, a little bit of a shoving match after.